Γεια σα και καλώ ήρθατε στο Euronews. Μια ανάσα πριν από τι ευρωεκλογέ, η άνοδο των ακροδεξιών δυνάμεων προκαλεί ανησυχία σχετικά με τη χάραξη πολιτική από το Ευρωπαϊκό Κοινοβούλιο την επόμενη πενταετία. Το ποιε μπορεί να είναι οι συνέπειε, αν η άνοδο αυτή αποτυπωθεί στην κάλπη, συζητούμε με τον Μίκουλα Τζούριντα, πρόεδρο του Κέντρου Ευρωπαϊκών Σπουδών Βίλφριτ Μάρτεν, αλλά και πρώην πρωθυπουργό τη Σλοβακία. Hello and thank you very much for joining us today. We're almost two months away from the European elections that are very critical as analysts, leaders um, and specialists warn because of the rise of the far right right now in uh, Europe. How real is the danger? Is it possible that we see the next five years the policies made uh, in the European Parliament being affected by far right uh, philosophies? I don't think so that it is uh, too serious. I don't like to underestimate threats, but at the same time, I like to say that uh, when speaking about the far right, I'm ready to talk about ID, identity and democracy, Madame Le Pen. But I'm not so ready to talk about uh, ECR, especially thanks to Madame Meloni, who proved to be pro-European politician, who understands that the perpetrator is Russia, aggressor is Russia, victim is Ukraine. Uh, it is the lady uh, who not only demonstrated, but proved that she's very loyal to our reunited Europe. And this is why I believe that even if the classical trio will continue, it means Christian Democrats, we, EPP, socialists and liberals, sometimes it will be necessary or advantages for many sides to work also with ECR. Mm -hmm. You know, people sometimes in the European elections tend to vote to warn their national governments. You know that. They don't focus so much on the European uh, perspective. And they do it easily because it more or less has no cost uh, in their national uh, politics. But the truth is that this vote affects uh, very much their daily life. Uh, could you explain in which areas we could see changes if the far right takes the seats as uh, is projected by the polls right now. Uh, the, cru the crucial issue uh, in the months, and I'm afraid, I'm afraid that in the years to come, is Ukraine and internal EU reform. These two issues are substantial in my head. The first, I have already mentioned to, the, uh, to some extent that uh, Ukraine will decide a lot about stability of the EU, about uh, 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 the reform of our defense. It is necessary now, and I strongly believe and I feel that there is a momentum to not only to decide, but to proceed to very, very perspective and gradual building of our common European Defense Union. And in this respect, I believe that also ECR will be positive and constructive element of the cooperation. The other issue is internal reform of the EU. We need uh, quicker and swift decision making, especially in foreign policy area and in defense. In this respect, I am not so optimistic. Just yesterday, the European Parliament uh, has approved a new asylum policy, the package of two legislations. But we started negotiations 10 years ago. It is also obvious that we need internal EU reforms due to two reasons. The first is uh, swift, more effective decision making. And the second is uh, the final round of our enlargement. Because uh, the project of the European reunifi re reunification has not been uh, completed yet. Uh, the countries of the Western Balkans are waiting and working Ukraine and the countries of, of West, uh, Eastern Partnership are waiting and working. And this big bank requires also our internal reform because this is the question of our absor absorption capacity, but also the question of our decision making. In this respect, I am less optimistic that ECR and the right, far right, will be, will be I would say, uh, understandable and able to cooperate, cooperate with us. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so since you talked about the war in the Ukraine, after two years there's some analysts saying that right now the pro-Ukrainian alliance is Europe is losing momentum. In your country, for example, Slovakia, you have a pro-Russian prime minister and now you have a pro-Russian president. Uh, do you agree? Is this possible? Uh, you mean uh, uh, to succeed in Ukraine? No, I mean that uh, the, the alliance, the pro-Ukrainian alliance, is losing momentum. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I am not sure. I understand the question. But maybe it is too early for such a statement. Why? Because um, Ukraine needs more time to mobilize uh, human power, human resources, and because uh, there is a big mistake on our side. We promised but we didn't deliver. If I say we, I mean the European Union, but especially the United States. The West. The West, yes, globally the West. So this is why I am a bit reluctant to say that we are definitely lost momentum. Mm -hmm. The momentum is still mm -hmm. here, but we should uh, not be uh, hesitating uh, for a longer time. Apart from the, apart, uh, the apparent danger for Ukraine, if the, this support uh, is withdrawn at some point, what other dangers are there? Uh, I think that uh, there are two issues which should be taken into account. The first is the internal unity in Ukraine. It is not easy in time of war to be united enough, especially if you are not winning, not so quickly as you believed. And from the other side, there is also a tension on our side. Look at the situation with the Ukrainian farmers, the grain. So we love Ukrainians until the moment when our farmers uh, face difficulties. So uh, we need a lot of mutual understanding. We should be strong enough to not only show solidarity, but to deliver what we promised. Is it a fight for the European values as well? Yes, yes, I believe it is, because it is also the challenge uh, in older democracies, not only in Ukraine or newcomers. This is a challenge for the United States as well. Look at the United States, the country in which uh, we took democracy for granted. A look at Spain, for instance, a look at other European countries, a look at the, the far right in Germany. So, yes, I miss a stronger emphasis on values. The last politician who opened his speech and ended his speech with the emphasis on values was Helmut Kohl. And we then underestimated that. that. Uh, you talked a little bit, you referred to the enlargement uh, before. The Russian invasion in Ukraine, we could say, opened a geostrategical window right now for uh, the enlargement that had been frozen for years. Do you think there's an actual momentum here? And do you think the, the European Union should do something to speed up the accession of at least some of these countries? Yeah, I, I believe that you are right. There is a momentum. And uh, Russia has reached, reached something unexpected. First, Putin helped Ukraine to unite itself. Uh, I had been serving for President Poroshenko for five years, and I felt very strongly that the East is different than the, the, the West. In these days, this is a miracle how strongly the country is politically united. The other dimension is that, uh, yes, you are right, uh, there is a big shift in the geopolitical development. We can follow the axis Russia, China, North Korea, Iran very, 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 very easily. And this is also for us a challenge to, to be stronger, to look for new allies, to stick to the United States uh, in the transatlantic alliance. And Ukraine can help us. Uh, Ukraine can, can boost this transatlantic element. So at the end, I believe that the, really there is a momentum because uh, if uh, we absorb the countries of the Western Balkans, if we absorb not only Ukraine, but also Moldova, for instance, we are just stronger.
Mm -hmm. uh, and what do you think about the procedure that is being followed for the accession uh, of these countries? You know, they have been waiting for many, many years. Sometimes uh, they change what they're asked for and they try to follow up. It's taking them many, many years. Do you think the, the procedure should change a little bit now or is it okay for you? I don't think so that we should, we should change the procedure. Because it's, if we do that, then we will understand each other uh, very difficult. So we should be patient and the countries uh, such as Serbia should understand that they are obliged to not only to meet criteria, to establish normal relations with Kosovo, for instance, but also to be economically strong, to be competitive, to resist in an open competition. Because with the Czech Republic, we, the Slovaks, we are brothers, sisters, we are friends, but in the economic field, we are competitors. So the countries, Montenegro, Northern Macedonia, Kosovo, Serbia, Ukraine, should understand that, this necessity. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this discussion. Thank you for your interest.